I don't believe you'll have anything resembling normalcy in the tourism sector before 2024, which even that may be optimistic. We're going to see so many ups and downs and backwards and forwards that I can only describe trends. Already we've seen a couple of trends that I think are going to be permanent. One is the growing inequality of tourism. The COVID in many countries, including my own, the United States, has um, decimated um, struggling families. People who were um, sort of in the middle class and have now dropped are not going to have money for tourism. That's not going to be, they're not going to have the disposable income. And tourism will be more and more skewed to the wealthy. But that doesn't mean that people aren't going to travel. They're going to travel differently. They're going to take far, far fewer trips. I'm guessing people who now take a dozen trips, they're going to take two. On the consumer side, I think you're going to see far fewer trips, but trips that last longer. Pre-pandemic, things were so inexpensive, you could jump on an airplane and decide to go from from London to Barcelona for a bachelorette party. People just aren't, that there's going to be a change in behavior. When you spend two weeks someplace instead of a weekend, the visitor is bound to spend more time at local places, be more, I hope, respectful of the place, and, um, and spend money that, um, that stays in the, the destination where they're visiting. So that's one thing, fewer trips, lasting much longer. And it's not elitist per se in the sense that I think it was a travesty in many ways, the people who were funneled that way, the cheap cruise ships or the cheap planes, what did they see? And were they welcome? No. It's what we call in drive-by tourism. That, there's a good chance that's going to go away and instead it's going to be a good tourism, but just not so much. That's not elitist to say that. And I think that's the trap people get into that it was who was making money off of those inexpensive flights and those inexpensive cruise ships. It wasn't the destinations, it was some international corporation. But in business travel, that's going to be what hurts some of these economies the most because businesses have discovered the use of Zoom. Businesses see a, a bottom line and they can say, okay, we're recovering. One thing we don't need to spend money on right now is business travel. They're gonna take that out of their budget. And that's what's gonna hurt because tourism can never replace the amount of money made from business. There's gonna be a huge environmental component in all this. We saw this in the United States. Well, the citizens of Key West voted in November to ban all big cruise ships and to allow only a limited number of small cruise ships to dock and visit if they followed strict environmental rules. This is extraordinary. Everyone thought Florida would never cave into citizen complaints about the environmental costs of cruise ships, the cultural cost, and just the, the nuisance cost. The tourism industry is going to be much more concerned about the environment. I think driven by the people in the destinations that are visited, the people who want tourism, but want it to benefit the locals, that want it to benefit the environment, and they want the economic benefits to stay as much as possible there rather than in international chains or something like that. It's not saying people don't want tourists. Everybody wants tourists. They want travelers. They want people to come and visit. I think if I were going to do a one word, um, one sentence, you know, tag, tag line, it would be travel will be seen now as a, as no longer a right, which it never was, but is a luxury and that on all sides. Mm -hmm.